So we're up here on a mountain in Brownsville. So we came out here to uh, look for people who have seen sightings of UFOs or had alien experiences. We just left a convenience store where we talked to a gentleman who had one when he was five years old, uh, which you'll see that interview when I post the video. And uh, right now we're driving, as you can see, up this mountain that has very little road to it. And there's my forerunner there. So Austin's kind of seen how far it's going. How far does it go down? Uh, it's really overgrown, like 500 feet that way. Oh. Uh, what's that noise? Chainsaw. Oh, awesome. Nothing like coming out in the country and hearing the sound of a chainsaw. We passed the people that we're hearing. Yeah, I know, I was just making a joke. Anyway, so we are going to take a break here for a second, and then um, we're going to see if we can see anything in the skies. So this is going to be a very short video, added to other short videos to make a long video, because we don't want to bore you just by sitting in the grass. So uh, we'll talk to you guys in a little bit. We'll, I'll come back on once it gets a little bit dusk, so we can maybe see something in the sky. All right. Bye, everybody. <laughs> All right, so what was your experience when you were a kid? What did you see? Basically, all I seen was a big triangle that flew over us, and it was like soundless. Really? And how old were you? Five. Really? So, most of the accounts I hear about this area is from people who are now grown, who saw it as children. Do, does that make, like, uh, a mean, meaning to you or anything? I don't know. Maybe it's a childhood fantasy or something. Well, no, I mean, adults was with a lot of the other, these oh. other kids. Was you by yourself? No, I was with my cousins. Oh. Was you out in the woods or something? Or? Backyard. Backyard. And where at, was it here in Brownsville? Where? Profitsville, next town up. Really? And you grew up in this area? Yeah. Do you hear a lot of people talk about UFOs in the area? Not really. Really? Oh. Yeah, they do and they don't. Have you seen anything since you got became an adult? Okay. And you've never experienced like weird dreams or nope. or uh, like time vortexes or missing time or anything? Hmm. All right. Well, I do want to. Pre I appreciate your time. So, yeah, that's very interesting. All right, well, thank you. Yep. Oh wow! Uh, can I make you my phone number? So maybe. Um, sure. Uh, maybe I could. Uh, you can call me. Let me know when a good time. If I could see those, that'd be awesome. Yeah. I'll that know. is a really cool phone. By the way. Oh, thanks. It's a, a Galaxy.
Yeah, yeah, no worries. Even, even just hearing your story would be awesome because I know her grandfather. She was saying there's a. She used to come here when she was five years old. And she, they saw like a flash of light when they were camping and stuff. And then her grandpa claimed that they came to him all the time. Yeah. And she goes, Usually we always once, thought once he was crazy. Once, they'll, they'll, they'll keep coming back. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember her grandpa's last name? She went. I didn't know what it was, but uh, so I'm actually doing an interview with her next month. I'll find out and then, you know, give me a call. Let me know what okay, yeah, because um, 90% of the people who live in Brownsville are descendants from the original pioneers. Right. That's why this is a historical um, site. Yeah. Um, and um, the pioneer picnic, you just missed it, uh, is the third longest running uh, public gathering in the state of Oregon. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so, um, most of the, I, I'd be curious if uh, the person who you're talking about is from our, from our pioneer families. Could be. Or a, or a transplant. If you weren't a pioneer, you could be here. Well, he's, she said he grew up here since he was a boy. Well, my, my dad did too, but he was not one of the original pioneer families. But he is, uh, she said he's passed on in the house of the probate right now. Yeah. All right, Bear. And your name was? My name's Laura. Laura, it's nice to meet nice you. And thank you so Mark. much. Cute dog. And I love that you got him strapped in. Oh, yeah. That's oh, yeah. awesome. I, I make sure that he did well. He likes to lean too. Hi, everybody. So this is uh, me doing an interview with somebody who had an incident with... Um, a UFO sighting when she was younger. Um, I'm going to refer to her as JJ. Um, she doesn't want her identity to be known, which is um, for a good reason. So uh, she's, I do know her personally, and she is of sound mind, and she's very smart and stable. And so the story she's going to tell you um, is very legitimate to me. Uh, I try to pick the people who I interview to be um, very stable and uh, not use the term wackadoodles. So uh, I'm going to have her tell the story of when she was a girl and then we're going to go into some other things. So uh, JJ, won't you tell me about what happened to you and your family in Brownsville, was it? So a little bit of backstory. My family owns a big ranch in Brownsville and it's in this area that's out of town. It's a big long driveway. Like there's nothing up there pretty much. And uh, we were up there one day just having a bonfire because we would do barbecues every once in a while and drink in. And it was, it was really weird because it was just a normal night. Mm -hmm. And we would get together probably once a month. It wasn't like it was something for a special occasion or anything. And we were all sitting around the fire and then the whole sky just lit up out of nowhere. And it wasn't like there was a flashlight or something on. It was like it was daylight all of a sudden. Like I was looking into a big LED light. And to this day, we can't explain it because we don't know how to explain it. We still talk about it, but... And how old were you? I want to say I was probably around six, seven, somewhere in there. It's, I was pretty young, so it's hard to tell the exact date. Well, I know, but I mean, but the fact that you were so young and you remember so oh, that, vividly. That must have been pretty, not traumatic, but rememberable. Yeah. So, was you scared? I remember being more confused than scared. Right. Looking back now, I probably would be terrified. But when you're a kid, you're like, why is it right? What's going on? I don't understand. But when I was a kid, I was just very confused. It's the biggest feeling I remember. Mm -hmm. But the look on people's faces, like adults around me, were, they were scared, but they were also just just as confused as I was. Yeah. And what, so what happened afterwards? Um, it only was in the sky for a few seconds, probably less than 10 seconds, and then it just went away just like it came. And we sat there and we were looking at each other like, what just happened? And it took a couple minutes for anyone to even say, like, what's going on? Because they were trying to wrap their brain around it. Right. And, well, I can imagine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
it's a pretty major thing, and I just remember them all being like, do you see that too? Am I going insane? Like, are these drinks laced? Like, we were trying to figure out anything. Is there a helicopter? Is there a floodlight? Is it something from town? Which wasn't really an option, because we were probably four or five miles out of town, and Brownsville's a really small town. There's nothing going yeah, on in Brownsville. Yeah, I've been there a few times. And, and on the video, it will show that I've been there quite a few times and talked yeah. to a few people, which we'll get into in a minute. But, um, so you said it looked like daylight, but was it more centralized in your area, or was it just around overall? It was pretty much as far as we could see all the way around. Like, I mean, it had to be a really large area because this ranch is this big open area we're in, and then just trees all the way around. Mm -hmm. And like, we'd look into the trees, and we could see like light coming through the trees all around us. Wow. So I can't tell you how big it was, but it was. It wasn't just on us. Was the light so blinding you couldn't see up? Um, it was similar to looking up at like LED lights. Oh, like okay. it's not, it's like, okay, that's really bright, but it's not like blinding, like the sun would hurt, but yeah. LEDs don't hurt as much necessarily. Cause there's, so there's no heat source to it. Yeah. And it, now I don't remember feeling any warmth or anything strange. It just, it was it's just silent. Like even the, everything in the forest was quiet there for a second. Yeah. And typically there's birds and owls and all kinds of stuff going on, but it just was quiet. So this was your grandfather's yeah. ranch, right? My great grandfather's ranch. Great grandfather's yeah. oh, that was your grandfather's. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't want to reveal his name or anything, but uh, so the interesting thing, so I'm gonna kind of put this in there because it correlates with your story, mm -hmm. is when I went to do interviews in Brownsville, what I found odd as a writer, an investigative writer, is Usually when you go up to people on the street and say, hey, have you seen an alien or a UFO? Mm -hmm. uh, people would think you're crazy or, you know, you're working for the Inquirer or something. <laughs> um, and nobody did. They were all like, oh, yeah. You know, just like, you know, yeah, that just happens every day around here. And they were telling me stories at, about triangle objects and, and uh, lights in the sky and stuff like that. And it was just nonchalant and it, it, it struck me as odd, you know, especially being a small town. Most people don't talk to strangers a lot and uh, they're very close community kind of thing. Uh, not everybody up there, I'm, I mean, I'm not exaggerating, I mean everybody I talked to was open, nobody scoffed at me. Uh, in fact, we had a woman and a gentleman on separate occasions tell me that uh, the gentleman said that his dad has journals of beings that came to visit him nightly. I asked, I gave him my number, he's never called me yet, uh, to see the journals. A woman actually stopped us on the street, which we have on tape, uh, in her car and talked to us and said that she had bought a house and the prior owner who had passed away in the house, a uh, farmer or wrench or something, um, left stacks upon stacks of journals there uh, that she will gather for me, she still has them, um, of him saying that he had nightly visits and that there were owls at his window and, and stuff yeah. like that. So did something like that happen with your great grandfather? Yeah, so my grandpa, again, everyone at Brownsville is pretty nonchalant about it. Go outside of Brownsville and that's not the case, but in Brownsville yeah, it's just odd. so normal that people just talk about it. and. Um, my grandpa was super open about it. He would sit there and talk to us and be like, oh yeah, that owl, he's watching you. He's, that's an alien, that's not an actual owl. And he was very open, like about, not even just the owls, the critters and stuff. Like he would be like, yeah, that one's not a normal critter. And that, you know, and just like he completely believed it. And I believe that he believed it. And he right. would talk about, you know, them coming and visiting him or this and that. And I remember being a kid and being like, oh yeah, cool grandpa. But, you know, now it's putting two and two together, I'm like, oh, yeah, maybe that makes a little bit of sense, yeah. but, yeah. Well, and what's common is people who have been claiming that they've been abducted or visited by uh, anything other than humans is uh, they claim of, of owls. I had a roommate here who claimed owls were at our window, and uh, I never experienced that, but... Uh, I did, however, my son was here visiting and we were out in the back parking lot here at this very house and we, I, I have the pictures which I did show them, but, uh, of orange balls in the sky yeah. and uh, over 40 some odd people in town saw it, took pictures of it and the paper came and did an interview. 
But when we after we got through watching the balls go across the sky, my son said, "What the hell is that?" And there's a pole out here, and on top of it was the biggest. I say it's three foot owl oh, that I've ever seen in my whole life, and it looked like an owl, mm -hmm. and it kind of freaked me out. So I came inside, but um, so that's the only experience I have with that. But so the commonality. I mean, I, I read stories and I hear stories of people seeing the house so that Grandpa said that is is really interesting, you know. Yeah, and he was super open about it. Like, anytime anyone would, so he was a Korean War vet, mm -hmm. so anytime anyone would be like, all right, you're crazy, he would like be like, all right, we're going to fight now. Like, yeah. that was how strongly he believed in it. And do you, do you guys still have those, I don't want to read them, but yeah. do you still have those journals and stuff? Or? Not that, that I'm kept. aware of. Because um, you said he kept journals, right? Yeah. Um, I don't think he kept up on it like bam, 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 though, right. like kind of a lot of these people you're talking about did. Um, I know he probably journaled a little bit, but I couldn't tell you where it is. He kind of kept a lot of stuff. Whenever he passed away, there was like 50 cars on the property that we had to figure out what to do. We just broke right. down ones, found a random Porsche like under a cover that was all old, and we're like, oh, cool, what do we do with this? Yeah, um, that's crazy. So, they could be around, but not that we have found, like... Wait, so your family still owns this ranch? Yeah, they still own the ranch. They uh, just pulled a bunch of lumber off of it, and they're probably going to end up selling it, but as of right now, they still own the ranch. No one's living up there right now. So, who's... Is this your grandfather, great-grandfather on your dad's side or your mom's side? Uh, it's my great-grandfather on my mom's side. Okay, I see. And I remember you saying something earlier about, um, maybe I'm wrong, I mean, I'm getting some mistake about your family fighting over the property or something? Um, so yeah, my great-grandpa had two sons, my grandpa and his son. His son has done lots of drugs and stuff over the years, so his brain is a little fried, and we've had lots of issues with us going up there to help clean out the house and do this or that, pulling lumber out and like pull a gun on us. Oh, he so lives I, there. Uh, he was living there. Um, there was some legal action that was taken, so he's not allowed on the property right now. But that makes selling it and dealing with stuff that much more mushy and difficult. Yeah, I can imagine. So. Well, I did drive the road. Yeah. Uh, I can't believe that. Uh, I mean, I can't remember the name of the road now. Courtney Creek. Courtney Creek. So I did drive. That's a very small road. Yeah. By the way, I thought it was quite extensive, and it's not. It leads oh. into another town. Yeah, goes into Crawfordsville. Crawfordsville. Yeah, because we actually stopped at a convenience store there, and I'm like, where are we? We're at Crawfordsville. Mm -hmm. I'm like, wow, that took, took no time at all. But uh, so we actually went on Courtney Creek Road, and there's not a lot of places to park. We were going to mm -hmm. just spend the night there. Yeah. Um, but a lot of people were looking at us. Who the hell are you kind of thing. So I didn't want the law called on us. It's a pretty tight knit community. Yeah. So um, you know, I, I eventually want to go up there and find a space that um, even if I have to knock on doors and give permission to kind of just check it out. But um, on average how often do you think this would happen to your grandpa? I'd say it would be at least once a week, if not multiple times a week. Um, That's insane. He, I mean, he was so open about it, like it happened every night, but I can't tell you exactly when it happened because it was, again, I uh, kind of was like, all right, blew it off as a yeah. kid. But yeah. now looking back, I was like, I wish I could have paid more attention because I well, don't know. Uh, I mean, you're a kid. I, when I was yeah. a kid, my grandma talked about angels coming to talk to her and mm -hmm. all this stuff, and we always thought, you know, she had slight dementia. Mm -hmm. or some, but some of her theories, uh, she was a Mormon, but some of her theories uh, were outlandish. But now that I'm older and I think back at it, I'm like, maybe she had something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I understand where you're coming from. But um, so I, again, when I went to the town, um, it just seems like this is very uh, normal mm -hmm. for everybody there. Um, do you think that your grandpa talked to other people in town about it? I don't know. Um, I mean, he lived there for a long time, so he very well could have, but I can't say for sure. Mm -hmm. um, would he be the type who would just stop and talk to people? And he'd probably talk to people about how their day's going and stuff, but I'm not sure if he ever had a super tight connection. I mean, he was up, 
it was like 50 acres on this property. It's a very large property. Wow. And um, he was up there on his own. I can tell you on multiple occasions we'd go up to visit and he'd be like, no, you've got to call ahead because he's out like taking a naked hike. Like he kind of stuck to himself for the most part. Yeah. Um, with that said, I mean, he definitely talked to people in town, but I don't know how deep the relationships were. Mm. It's um, interesting. Um, one other thing I wanted to talk to you about was something that happened to you and I uh, when we took a route. Uh, so, um, JJ and I went on a car ride, and uh, we knew what time we left. Um, so we went to Florence, which is the coast, I'm trying to think what information I could put out there. And uh, we knew what time we took off. I was driving, JJ was a passenger, and uh, I know we left about 105, right? It's like 1 o'clock, 105, somewhere in there. Yeah. And it's an hour and 20 minute drive back to where we were going. With traffic. With traffic, yeah. And um, so do you remember any of that traveling at all? I slept most of it, just being completely honest. Um, no, I mean, usually on um, drives back when you're that far away from everything, yeah. I just get tired and I conk out, but yeah. I mean, I remember being tired. Well, I remember you sleeping. Yeah, I and then I was sleeping and then I woke up and we stopped at a little mini mart or something and I was like, oh, I don't know Cheshire. how I slept that long. Yeah. So, I don't, I don't mean, you guys can do the math, but uh, from, I think we were just, I mean, we were in Florence, we were just outside Florence. Mapleton. Mapleton, yeah. So Mapleton to Cheshire, however length that time is. Um, but I remember when we got to Cheshire, uh, I I felt really dizzy, and very nauseous. I went into the porta potty, got sick, and urinated, and uh, came back smoked. And I remember you were missing from the track, and I'm like, oh my god, this is an induction case. So this. <laughs> It, that's how discombobulated I was. Like I was very confused. I was very like I don't even know how to describe it. And uh, I just smoked my cigarette, and then I thought, okay, I'm gonna wait. It's a very small convenience store, so I'm gonna wait to see what happens. And then you came out of the store, and I was it's kind of like sigh of relief. But um, so I I remember the drive. I totally remember the drive. And I didn't feel sick or disoriented. It, I turned up the music to listen to it. I wasn't tired. Um, I remember other cars passing us. I don't know how else to say. It was very normal. Yeah. Um, I thought we were doing great on time. In fact, you and I talked about getting back early. And um, we were both excited about that. And because uh, we, we'd had long days. and. Um, yeah, I, and then in Cheshire, wasn't it you at the convenience store? Wasn't it you that said something about time or something? Or was it me? It was you. I think it was me because yeah. I had been sleeping from Mapleton to Cheshire. And I was like, oh, I don't know how I slept that long. Like, what happened? Because I thought we hit traffic or something. You know, like some sort of reasoning. And yeah. You were like, no. Because it, it was, was three something. Yeah. If I remember right, it was like 3.30 or 3.35 or something like that. It was it was weird, because I, I remember you saying something, because you exclaimed. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I was, I thought you were trying to pull my leg or something. Yeah. You know? And uh, you showed me, I believe. It was in your cell phone, I think. And uh, I, yeah, it just blew my mind. So, and we didn't, we didn't even get to Tangent, Oregon, until 4 something. Yeah. It was pretty uh, late. Yeah, it was late, and uh, I think we were the very last people in, and we shouldn't have been. Um, so that after all that happened, I uh, I, I have to know things. Mm -hmm. So um, I dug around, did some research, really couldn't find an explanation for it, and then I, I talked to a friend of mine who's a physicist and um, a couple other people in the whole paranormal community. They came up with some outlandish things, but the one thing that I think stuck was. Uh, the time vortex. Mm -hmm. I guess Oregon suffers from a lot of time vortexes, and I didn't know that. And they pop up 
some are, are continuous, some just pop up wherever. Yeah. And what, what a time vortex is, is the earth has a lot of energy in it, and sometimes it, it finds spots that just burst energy out. And then it attaches itself to an inanimate object or uh, animate object. And what happens is that energy swirls. It's like a tornado, and that thing is stuck in the middle. It seems like everything's going by normal, but to you, you slow down, like whatever, to some rate. So you're actually going probably five miles an hour, and everybody else is going 65. Yeah. And uh, it seemed normal to me. That's why it, when I found that out, I thought, well, let me think of my drive. And was there anything weird about it? And I'm like, nothing was weird about it. I remember the cars going by me. I remember looking at my speed because I had to go around curves. Everything was normal. But uh, that's the only thing I can say happened is we got stuck in a time vortex. And people, and I did do research on that, and people that have suffered from that, um, said that they've gotten nauseous and dizzy and lightheaded and, and some of it was explained. I mean, was you nauseous and dizzy-headed? Uh, not that I can remember. I mean, I remember being a little nauseous, but I think it's because I was hungry at that point. Yeah. Like, if I go too long without eating food, I'll get nauseous kind of thing. Yeah. But I don't know. I can't contribute to one or the other necessarily. Mm. So I remember when I got to the store, I was like, okay, I need to eat some food. I'm not, you know, I'm feeling kind of nauseous. I went in and got some sort of food in the store. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's weird. But anyways, yeah. uh, so getting back, do you ever go back to your grandpa's ranch? Um, I've been out there a few times in the last few years, just whenever they're doing logging or this and that, but not as often. Um, we didn't go as often after that night, and I don't know if it was because my parents were freaked out or it just life got busy or what, but. I remember it being a pretty normal thing, and then we'd be doing it less and less, and then eventually we was getting together a couple times a year. Um, I don't know what the exact reasoning was necessarily, though. I don't want to say it's because of that, but I know that they were definitely thrown off by it, because right after that, they were like, all right, we're going to go home, and we went back to Halsey. That night, or the next morning? That night, we were like, they were like, no, we, we have to go. <laughs> oh, wow. And how many family members was there? Do you remember? Um, it was me, my parents, my sister, who had been really little, uh, my cousins were there, and then my uncle Rich, my grandpa, or no, I didn't know if my grandpa was there. My uncle Rich was definitely there. Oh, great grandpa was there, that's probably what I was thinking. So, I mean, there was a handful of people. Maybe 15, 20? Uh, I didn't know if it was necessarily that, I'd oh. say probably 6 to 10. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then everybody just went home that day? Uh, yeah, so my cousins were staying with us at the time. They are going through some stuff with their mom. And uh, so they are staying with us. They went home with us. Um, and then Uncle Rich, oh. anyways, my uncle was uh, staying up there. He lived up there at that time. Just in a trailer, oh, I so. Okay. So, so it wasn't walking. like your grandpa was alone? Yeah. Um, Cause I would have felt kind of weird just leaving him there, I guess. Yeah. So my uncle lived in his own little camper out there, and my grandpa had like this manufactured home oh, on the property. So I mean, they lived separate but on the same property. I mean, the property was so big it might as well have been separate, but yeah. it was still there. Does your family still talk about? And that's the only incident you had with your grandpa, right? Yeah, that like we were there for. I mean, he would talk to us about. You know this and that going on like oh yeah they were in the sky last night or something like that but like i said it was pretty normal and we were like okay going insane we get it <laughs> but i mean did your family like you and your parents and you and your sister or cousins ever talk about it outside of your grandpa's presence yeah i mean we definitely talked about it i remember we talked about it a lot in like the next month afterwards because it was weird we were like trying to come up with literally any excuse that makes sense because no one wants to think, oh, okay, there's these aliens or something's going on yeah. that's going to come and kill Fine. us. Like, we definitely didn't want to think that that's what it was. We were trying to come up with literally anything. And then when we couldn't come up with anything, we didn't talk about it as much anymore. Yeah. Because then it's like, okay, now we don't have to face the reality. But every once in a while, I'd say probably once a year or something, I'd be like, hey, remember that light? We're like, unfortunately, yes. 
<laughs> yeah, and but you guys didn't live in Brownsville. No, we lived in Halsey, which is not far off Brownsville. Yeah, it isn't too far. Huh. And you guys never experienced anything there? Not really, not in Halsey. Well, so what's really uh, kind of odd to me is when we did go there, we went to Crawfordsville, and uh, when I was talking to the lady in the community store who doesn't live there, she lives in Albany, mm -hmm. but um, a guy walked in with his daughter who lives in Crawford, Crawfordsville, and I just asked him, and um, he said that he, he has seen things in the sky far mm -hmm. off, but not so much in their area. Yeah. And it, it made me think that maybe Brownsville in that area is more centralized to that. I don't know, I'm still kind of investigating it, so yeah. it seems kind of weird for me to say that, because it, it, I would think you would pick more of a populated area to, if I was yeah. a different species, you know, or whatever. And what would they possibly, I mean, do they just go down and talk to these people, or are they like doing experiments on them? I mean, did your grandpa ever complain about experimentation, or? Not really, I mean, he would, he would talk about them like, they were his friend Joe, like they were just, like he wasn't scared at all, it was just something that was normal to him, and I feel like if you were being experimented on, you'd probably be a little more yeah, afraid yeah. of him, but he just, it was like, oh, this that's just part of life, like super nonchalant about it, which is weird to me. Yeah, and everybody there is. Yeah. And so, uh, did, did he ever describe what they looked like? No, um, not that... I can remember the biggest thing is he would just be back like there were the creatures and animals, and especially owls more than anything. Like he would be like, yes, there was white owls or like barn owls. He would point out a lot because there are barn owls all over up there. Um, so the owls would be on the property with you there yeah. and he would say... Yeah, he would point at them and be like, that one's an alien. He'd be like, sure, but it's just an owl. Like, <laughs> yeah. Was it a normal size owl? You saw the owl, he was pointing out. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what a necessarily normal sized owl would just typically be, but they were probably like, I don't know, a foot and a half, two feet. Yeah. I mean, they were large, but barn owls get pretty big normally. Yeah, they do. So it's hard to be like what a normal sized owl is, because I've seen small barn owls and big ones, and it just has everything to do with their age. Yeah. I mean, I've never liked owls, they've always creeped me out, but I think yeah. him saying stuff like that is part of the reason why. Probably. Yeah, um, I, imagine. I don't necessarily remember being like afraid like this owl's going to hurt me or anything like that. I mean, I remember I didn't like to go hiking around the property on my own, so you'd feel like you're being watched, but also, really? yeah, I mean, I don't know. I have really bad anxiety, that also could be part of it. Like. I'll get anxious over the smallest things and then feel like I'm going to die. Yeah. Well, I mean, 50 acres is a lot of land. Yeah, I So, mean, I mean, to is. walk around, I mean, you have that potential of getting lost. There's anxiety in that, even for people who don't have anxiety. Yeah. You know, it's, you know, if you don't know your sense of directions and stuff like that, which and I, I, mean, I suck at. So, uh, growing up going I, there, I knew the, or the land pretty well. I mean, I knew, like, all right, go down here, this so far, and there's some fresh garlic in the ground, or, Blah, blah, blah. Um, but I don't know. I mean. Yeah. So, I don't know. So, if I were to go to Courtney Creek Road and just drive down a long driveway, would people come out with rifles and guns? More than likely. Oh, yeah. That's, that's not a good thing. So, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Don't get shot. <laughs> yeah, I know it's a pretty protected community. And that's, I, and I knew that about Brownsville. I've always, I mean, I lived near Brownsville. And I had a friend named Natalie who bought a saloon in Brownsville. She doesn't, she doesn't own it anymore, I just found out. But, uh, so I spent a lot of time up there. And the people are very friendly, but they're very close together. Like they protect each other. And, um, but not to the point where they don't accept strangers, which is really weird. Mm -hmm. Because I've lived in small towns all across America, and they're very, most of them are very, um, if you're an outsider, you're an outsider for a long time. Yeah. So uh, it's very weird that Brownsville is very open about that, and very open to talk about who and what they are, 
let alone talk about sightings. But the people I have talked to that are from the area, none of them have said that they've been abducted yeah. or experimented on. They just said they've seen crack and been talking to them. Yeah. So I find that odd, very odd. Well, I want to thank you so much for telling me the story. And uh, I think this is actually going to help some people. This is why I'm kind of doing this, um, is to kind of let people know in the area that you know, it's OK to talk about it and come forward and, and let people know that not everybody who has these experiences are um, crazy. It's yeah. I almost said that job. It's crazy. But, uh, so anyways, I want to thank you again. So I will talk to you guys soon.